Interesting thing. For most of the Cold War, the um, nuclear silos were located in agricultural areas. Where my grandparents' ranch was, in order to get there, you would pass three nuclear missile silos out in the middle of it. And my father, there was a control place, a nuclear missile control station. And my father and, would go there and he would get airmen to show him around the inside. Completely against regulations. It was totally against regulations. If they'd been found out, they'd been court-martialed and set to Fort Leavenworth in about five seconds. But they were so bored that when a you know, 12-year-old, 15-year-old kid showed up, they would say, oh, sure, we'll show you around. So my father got to see the interior of one of those. Um, it's now actually a monument. You can go out in South Dakota, you can drive out and see it. It's now a monument. All of those things have been cemented over. But in order to get to where my grandparents' ranch was, you went past three nuclear missile silos. That is a stupid thing to do. They should have put the nuclear missile silos right in the middle of cities. Because if the, the primary targets for the Soviets during the Cold War were large population centers, but they were also wherever it was that your nuclear missiles were. So look at this. You shoot your agricultural area to destroy those missiles, and you irradiate the agricultural area for hundreds of miles around probably, and you've lost your agriculture. Even if your cities stay intact, they're going to starve because they have no food. The best thing they could have done would be to put those nuclear missile silos right in the middle of cities so that if the cities are blown up, at least you have the possibility of recovering with all your agricultural left. Uh, my father mentioned that, and I thought about it. Went, yeah, yeah, it's stupid to put those nuclear missiles out in the middle of ag area. That's dumb. Should have put them near the cities. They're going to be targeted anyway. So, uh, Larry, Larry says that's where UFOs hang out around those silos. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> My own opinion. I, you want to know, and I've, I've tried, I've honestly, if somebody can give me an idea about how to do this, I've tried to think about it, right? I think that the reason that we don't see a lot of alien, we never see alien life forms or even evidence of it, has nothing to do with these various phases of technology where you start using more and more energy and eventually use, like, build a Dyson sphere and you get all the energy from your star. I don't think it's anything like that. I think what happens is you get to a certain point in your information technology where the virtual reality is identical to real life and so or, or better you know it's controllable a person has the cheat codes for the virtual reality that is indistinguishable from real life and maybe you find out you know you can't live anywhere except in your own gravity maybe we find out that we're kind of trapped on earth that until less or until we actually get artificial gravity maybe we're just stuck here maybe we can't survive on mars maybe the human body can't do it so in short order here our, our own it is going to be able to make things that are indistinguishable from you know the world around us in terms of what we feel see etc it's going to be indistinguishable except we will be able to control it we will have the cheat codes. It'll be like in Minecraft, only 10 million times better. I think it's very possible that what happens is people, uh, other civilizations, simply run into the limitations of reality. The speed of light is a hard limit, which means we are not going to go to Alpha Centauri anytime soon. You know, if we did, we'd have to build generation ships and have cryosleep, neither of which we have right now. And it would be thousands of years getting there. Uh, we're, we, we, it may just be that we're not leaving this solar system anytime soon. But at the meantime, our IT is becoming such that we will be able to create artificial realities for individuals, right? So every individual has their own artificial reality. I think maybe that's why we don't see aliens. Maybe it's because They've simply figured out they can't get around necessarily as fast as they can. They go into an artificial reality that is individual. Every single different individual in their universe, in their world, has their own artificial reality that they can tailor to be 
whatever kind of utopia that they think it is. And maybe they let other people share it. Maybe you get some MMORPGs, but to be honest, I doubt it. Why would you if everyone and everything that you can think of appears in your own artificial reality? Maybe that's just where aliens eventually end up, is something where everybody has their own little world that they can create, and why come out? You know, you got 3D printers giving you food. Um, you know, maybe you've got uh, exercise type machines to keep your body from completely atrophying because you're sitting inside of a VR the entire time. W why would you come out? Why would you come out to a world that, you know, isn't that great when you can create an entire world all of your own that suits your exact purpose? I think that way is where we're heading right now. But what I thought about is, you know, I thought, okay, well, let's posit that this is the way we're heading. I'm retired. I have some time to do this, and I'm not sure I'd be good at it. But I thought, okay, what if you tried to set a story in that kind of universe, right? You have all these people that are just locked up. I thought, okay, what if there's a real murder, right? Somebody is actually killed by someone else. And I can't figure out a motive for why they do it. <laughs> you know, you come up with something like as simple as like, what if I wanted to make a detective show, a detective story? And I can't because in a world like that, why would you kill anybody? There'd be no reason to kill anyone. They'd be all in their own little universe. Why would you kill anybody? So somebody could give me a motive for murder. <laughs> I'd like to write that story. So. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.